All right, Zora, you're live on the you. cha- you're live on the channel, man. What do you got to say? Why are we in this conversation? What are we talking about? I'm like really excited about this thing actually because like before that, like there was like not so much tier two and tier three like money at all. Like people like just can't like commit to Dota, you know. And now there's there's there is money on like tier two and tier three scene, but the but the point is like last year they also have like same amount of money for this all like majors and minors like 6.5 million and it's still the same so now they just cut off the tier one price pool to the tier two and tier three i think that's kind of rude to the tier one tier one team so that's the thing i don't like about it yeah but what if it's better for dota overall and dota becomes a more popular spectator sport yeah but it's good but like it, it, people don't know how much work you need to put on to become to join a tier one team and they are just cutting off the price pool for tier one team. I think that's pretty rude, I would say. Don't you think but the, it's pretty... don't you feel like the tier one teams make enough money? There's like over like if you go look at Dota Two or like prize money leaderboards for esports, it's like all Dota Two players. And it's pretty much all the people that you're talking about. Yeah, but they deserve it too because they work really hard for that. But and also if you if you like look like like Europe scene and now like NA and SA scene, like like if we just look at Europe, even the lower division team will be like somehow like seven Ks or eight K teams, and then we look out at like SA and NA teams, like they have like like they literally have like uh, will have like five K stacks or six K stacks, like literally nobody is there, like like there's yeah. like really less players. So I don't think that's gonna work there, to be honest. I mean, for Europe and CS, I think it's good. Yeah, but, well, like, it's a brand, it's a brand new system, is how I feel, and that's like when I created NADCL. What it ended up doing was actually, you know, we actually had teams that became teams, right? We had, we had Truffle Salt, we had Doze, we had Black Sheep. Um, we had all these people who, you know, all these guys who are literally just not on teams right now. All of a sudden, they were on teams and they were competing in NADCL every week, right? So all of a sudden, like, there just hasn't been any incentives for people to create teams inside of Dota to organize themselves. People just smash their heads up against the the wall known as matchmaking and hope that by getting into the top 20 that Puppy is going to invite them to join their team. Um, yeah, that's right. So now there's going to be a league where you have to compete on a regular basis and teams will have to, I don't know, be in it, right? They'll have yeah. to, to do their thing. I think that's pretty good for viewership, but... I don't really know if people want to watch like tier two Dota when there's a lower division map hat match it happening. Matter. It doesn't matter though, right? Like, like then how is it gonna benefit Dota if people don't not watching it? Like there's gonna be like only hundred of viewers or like tier two or tier three because nobody li- like to watch the low division because of this. Just I don't know. But the 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 thing about bringing all of the teams and the leagues together is that they collectively sell their viewership. So. Even if Secret's playing against fucking, you know, hillbillies, you know, the, the British hillbillies, they'll still, that British hillbillies are going to get a ton of exposure, right? They're going to get a ton of viewership. The league is still going to be carried by these top teams. And those leagues will be able to collectively sell that viewership um, because of those top teams. When I made NADCL, it was literally all of the North American teams, ex- except for the ones that you really wanted to watch. Right, so we we died in viewership. But if EG was playing in my league, and there was a couple of days where this was going on, you know, those people that would just follow EG would watch EG's games, and then they would learn about other teams and other players. Maybe they'd become more invested in those other teams and other players. Maybe they'd become fans. They'd want to watch other games that were happening in the league that weren't just EG. I think it's like a huge, um, I don't know, like a trickle down effect. And I'm glad it's finally starting. I mean, don't you think it's a bit unfair for like Europeans because the, there's a lot of players in Europe and there are more Immortals players. So like if you compare European to like SA League, the skill gap will be like insanely huge. Like, yeah, that's something to worry about. That's it's something I'm definitely going to talk about when I start going here. I, I'm I'm a little concerned about the prize money being the same for all of the leagues. That seems a little. Yeah, I feel like European should get higher and uh, SA and NA is like a bit lower, yeah, I would I say. Think, I think there's some sort of like business incentives on the back end of this where teams that are involved in the league will get paid more or they'll get like a cut, like a revenue share of sponsorship sales for the league. And that money will go directly into paying their players' salaries. So we might see it like 
in order to be in this in these leagues, there there might be like a certain amount of uh, like a minimum salary that you need to pay your players, right? So everybody in the league might just you know we might just have lower we might make less prize money, but we'll have higher salaries, which I think is kind of my hope or at least my optimistic viewpoint of the system. But don't you think that they like cut the prize pool from major? to give this money to tier 2 team so the hype will be major will be less than it used to be like like before dpc there were like 3 million dollars of major i as far i remember and oh, there was only three major but the hype was like really really huge like boston majors keith majors and now it's not it doesn't feel like same anymore it used to be like battle pass too so it was like like mini ti for us now it's like like because of maybe because of the less price pool the hype is not the same as it used to be yeah, I I know what you mean. I I agree. Mm-hmm. Like the that was the year they did the first the year that they did like the actual majors. This was 2016. Do you remember if the majors in 2016 had DPC points? I don't think so. Yeah, so they were kind of just like glorified third party events, right? Outside the international. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, that was the year that I played, and I didn't play in 2017 when they actually had DPC points um, attached to them. But in 2017, they kind of felt like pretty big deals, right? Like Boston Major. I don't even remember what the other ones were. But I mean, that's the oh. truth is about Dota. Like most of Dota's viewership only watches Dota, you know, two weeks of the year, and that's during the international. So I feel like they only watch international because of the high price pool. Yeah, and, well, it's it's you know it's it's a combination of the best Dota of the year, right? Teams are the most prepared, they're the most practiced. They bring their A game. There's the mo- you know there's an insane prize money for the winner. The stakes are ginormous. Um, it's it's a combination of all that, but yeah, definitely like the thirty million dollar prize money does drive a lot of viewership. But they don't watch just because they want to see who's going to win thirty million dollars. They watch because they enjoy watching you know this top tier Dota, right? And the action that ensues. So uh, are you happy about this or like, are you going to tell about your predict, uh, statement after this or what? Yeah, yeah I'm going to go through the whole page. Um, just kind of like read it through and then just talk about it as, as it progresses. But uh, okay. I, I appreciate you coming on here for a, for a, a quick conversation. Everybody, this is Zorat. He's uh, one of the best Storm Spirit slash Ember Spirit slash Void Spirit players in, uh, <laughs> in, in Europe. He only plays the Spirits. He's a true... Uh, Oh, it's frogs, zoomer, as they say. All right, man. Okay. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Peace out. I'll see you around.